special edition of This Week in Pennsylvania, Debate Night. WPXI Channel 11 News in Pittsburgh. We are I have met our five Republican candidates faced off in a spirited debate tonight in Harrisburg, all vying for a chance to be the next Republican senator of Pennsylvania. Good evening and welcome to a special edition of This Week in Pennsylvania Debate Night. I'm Andy Bahalshik. We are live from the WBRE WYU studios in downtown Wilkesbury, Pennsylvania. You have watched, just watched a live debate between Republican candidates in the, for the U.S. Senate. Now that seat is currently held by Pat Toomey, who is not seeking re-election. Tonight's debate featured Kathy Barnett, Jeff Bartos, Dave McCormick, Mehmet Oz, and Carla Sands. I'm joined by two political analysts for their take on tonight's debate. Joining me are Dr. David Sosa, a longtime political science professor in the area who has taught political science in area colleges and schools for some 40 years, and Rick Morelli, a Luzerne County resident who is very active in GOP politics. He's held several elected offices and also served as a GOP delegate in recent presidential conventions. First of all, Dr. Sosa and Rick Morelli, thanks for joining us tonight. I guess this debate did not fail to disappoint. We expected fireworks, a lot of people did. First time, they're all face to face and they did not fail. But the first topic we're going to go to is uh, right out of the gate, living in Pennsylvania, uh, the take on theirs, they went back and forth, who lived here longer, who was more of a Pennsylvania, here's what they had, some had to say. So my Pennsylvania roots are deep. I'm very connected to my friends uh, where I grew up and I'm very connected to the people of Pennsylvania. Well, Pennsylvanians that I speak to are quite clear they care much more about what I stand for than where I'm from. But I did grow up less than 10 miles from Kennett Square. But I can promise uh, the people of Pennsylvania that when these carpetbaggers lose, you will never see them again. And if they should win, you will never see them again. I am the only candidate running who has a proven track record of actually getting things done for the people of Pennsylvania. I am an eighth generation Pennsylvanian, so I've, my family's been in Pennsylvania longer than anyone else in this race. And as a matter of fact, my first real job was at Hershey Park. Okay, uh, panelists, your take on the responses there. Again, that was right, one of the first question of the debate, uh, Dr. Sozar. Well, it, it, it shows the spiritedness of this debate overall. Um, I, I have to agree, there's a lot of people because of jobs that have been born, raised in Pennsylvania, but they have to leave. We've known that for years. So I don't hold it against anyone. I, I, I kind of like the uh, argument those who, you know, listen to my, my uh, words, listen to my policies, listen to what I'm going to do, rather than how many years I've been here. But they all had good points. Uh, they're interested in Pennsylvania. I don't think anybody can fault any, five, uh, any one of the five for that. Okay, Rick, what's your take on that exchange there? Yeah, you well, know, everyone wants to vote for someone they know, someone in their backyard, and that was something that they're striving for in that point. But, you know, people need to remember, you have Mitt Romney, who's a senator from Utah, who's not from Utah. You have had Hillary Clinton, who's a senator in New York, who wasn't from New York. So it's not uncommon that people come from other states to come in for, for a seat like this. So although I think it's important and they're trying to establish their grassroots, I, I don't think it's going to be a major turning point or major issue when people go out to vote on May 17th. Okay, question number two, a, a big uh, issue tonight was the attack ads we've seen on, on television commercials for the last several months. Uh, a lot of fireworks between uh, McCormick and Oz. Here's what some of those exchanges had to say. President Trump saw right through him. He therefore did not endorse Mr. McCormick. He endorsed me. And out of that, uh, and another slew of these ads has arisen, once again, trying to tell Pennsylvanians something that President Trump does not believe is true, and I can state categorically, is not true. And I've done business around the world in 20 countries, including 2% of our business in China. And it's just disingenuous for Mehmet to say that when Mehmet has so many dollars coming in his pocket from China, which we can talk about, that it's, it's sort of mind boggling. Okay, they, they were, uh, that was one of the few moments that those two, those two candidates really went at each other. We expected yeah. more, and they did their share of going back and forth, but what's your take on that? Let's start with Rick with this time. Well, you know, the first rule in politics is that you want to define your opponent. You want, the pub you want to define what, those, what you want the public to think, and for McCormick wants to paint Oz as a liberal, a left, and, and, and he actually mentioned many times in the debate that he's a flip-flopper and tried to show that he's not consistent with a lot of his answers. Whereas uh, Oz was, has been attacking McCormick on his ties with China and the fact that his back pockets were aligned with China and his businesses. And so, you know, that's, that's politics. And, and, you know, whether we like it or not, there are attack ads. And moving forward in the debate, even though there weren't about ads, but you saw Barnett and Sands going at it and trying, and they were both trying to um, 
differentiate themselves. Um, but it wasn't with ads, it was just tonight in the debate. And that was very important because actually Sands is way lower in the polls and sh she's got less than a month to get there and she had to attack Barnett who's now actually moving up in the polls. David? One of the things that normally happens, and the negative ads are very good for this, they usually focus on things that have been said and done years ago. Uh, I'm sure that both Dave McCormick and Mehmet Oz have some different ideas of what they believed in when they were in their 20s and 30s and what they believe in now. So uh, people have to be careful when they watch these negative ads because it's usually not accurate. Oftentimes what you see, and this I think was across the board, most of what was negatively spoken about was spoken about in past elections, past times, not what's going on in this particular race. Okay. Another big issue discussed tonight, a very intense discussion about the economy. Basically, uh, the question was, what policy, Biden policy, would you reverse if you become a U.S. senator? Here's some of what uh, was said. But here's the rub. Democrats can change absolutely everything tomorrow if they wanted to. They would just have to admit that every single thing they've ever done and said has been a complete and utter failure. We are sitting on two Saudi Arabia's worth of natural gas. We can power the nation and we can power our allies around the world with Pennsylvania resources. We have to hold the line and support the low regulations. I will work to do that in Washington. We're going to onshore those jobs. We have to unlock energy. And this is where Mehmet's got a real problem. Because in his own words, he said as recently as October 13, 2014, that we should have a ban on fracking in Pennsylvania. There is no way the Green New Deal is going to provide us what the Democrats promised. It's a lie. Okay, Dr. Sosa, your take on that exchange? Um, you know what, I, I like a lot of the answers that they gave, but I think there was the one answer that nobody gave that I would have rather seen. No one senator elected is going to change what's going on in Washington. And in fact, the Senate can't do most of what you're talking about right now. What should have been an answer I would have liked to have heard is that we will make the president govern as a moderate because that is their role and that is their power. But nobody really came up with that tonight. Yeah, I, I mean, Dr. Solstar is right. I mean, when you look at the roles of the senators, I mean, they could fight for it, but it's not their position. But all their answers were consistent with natural gas. You can hear that in the govern, governor race as well. I mean, it is a fact that Pennsylvania does sit on a lot of natural gas and we, we could be abundant. Um, they talked a little bit about inflation and, and, you know, they obviously attacked the Democrats in Biden's administration. But, you know, to me, that, that question, there wasn't anything that differentiated any of them uh, on that and, and any of them should have gotten or lost any points. So in, on that issue, at least, you think they pretty much equalized each other out? Yeah. 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 I, I don't, again, I don't think that they really hit the mark with key issues. I mean, they hit the obvious. And, and the, 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 I thought they did a great job with the debate, too, holding them accountable for their time. But it, they all had 60 seconds, and 60 seconds is kind of tough to answer some of these questions in, in full length. And we're only giving you 30 seconds either, so yeah, that's, right. that's, <laughs> that's even right. analyze is less time. Okay, uh, Rick Morelli and Dr. Dave Sojourner will be right back. There is much more of a special edition of this week of Pennsylvania Debate Night coming up. We'll head back to Harrisburg to check in with one of the moderators of that debate, Dennis Owens from WHTM in Harrisburg. Stay with us. The water break on Main Street. We're committed to verifying everything through authorities and eyewitness accounts, so you can count on us to get the story straight. A couple lives here, one of them lucky to get out alive. Fast and accurate, the news team that's leading the way in northeastern Pennsylvania. Eyewitness News, together with you. Get Eyewitness News wherever you go when you download the PA homepage app. Grab it from the App Store, Google Play, or scan the QR code on your screen to get access to breaking news across the region. And now staying up to date and organized is easier than ever with our new save feature. Just tap the bookmark icon on any story or video and it'll be stashed away in your saved section for later. Download the PA homepage app today. Answers to your health questions are on pahomepage.com. Find local professionals in medicine, dentistry, and more, all in one convenient place. Visit your wellness network only on pahomepage.com. Looking for someone to get the job done? Go to PA Pros on pahomepage.com. Find local professionals covering a wide range of skills who can assist you in your daily life. Get help today from PA Pros 
on pahomepage.com. Not everyone has the luxury of the front row seat to the state capitol that I do in Harrisburg. What we hope to do with This Week in Pennsylvania is to tell you, here's what happened this week in Pennsylvania in state government, and here's why you should care. Many weeks, there's lots of things going on in Harrisburg. There are so many different factions and nuances to this state. There's so much going on here. Everything you could possibly want is in the state of Pennsylvania. Watch This Week in Pennsylvania, Sunday mornings at 6.30 on WBRE 28. Northeast PA, it's home. We know how to work, how to play. We're watching a special edition of This Week in Pennsylvania, Debate Night. Good evening, I'm Andy Mahalchik, the moderator for tonight's debate from our sister station, WHT in Harrisburg, Dennis Owens, host of This Week in Pennsylvania. Dennis, first of all, what are your thoughts on tonight's big debate in Harrisburg? And did anything surprise you uh, that you, or you didn't expect what you heard tonight? Well, first of all, I want to piggyback off what your analyst just said. It can't be easy to take a difficult topic and you've got 60 seconds in which to answer. Uh, that, that's not easy. In fact, I don't know that you and I could uh, live up to that right now, Andy. Um, we were expecting some contentiousness, and we got some contentiousness, and it's to be expected. Uh, we were also expecting, even though Donald Trump is technically not running uh, for U.S. Senate as a Republican, Donald Trump was very much here tonight. Uh, by our unofficial count, he was, his name was mentioned about two dozen times. Mehmet Oz, of course, announcing that Donald Trump had endorsed him. And Mehmet Oz even got better news today when it was announced that Donald Trump will hold a rally for him a week from Friday in Westmoreland County. So the other ones on the stage know uh, that a Donald Trump endorsement is probably a really good thing in a Republican primary for Mehmet Oz. They knew they had to kind of go after him a little bit. And I think in some instances they did. Uh, statistically, or according to the polls, Dave McCormick and Mehmet Oz are kind of on the upper tier. Everyone else a little below them. They got to kind of throw a few punches. Jeff Bartos kept pointing out that he has been the Pennsylvania guy all along. He's kind of the, the steady Eddie. I thought Kathy Barnett was very interesting. She noted, and I find it interesting, that she's statistically in the polls uh, kind of in a dead heat with the other two. She's kind of come from nowhere and is really kind of a, a firecracker, if you will. But she has a lot of support. And in the Lincoln Day dinner type of Republican get-togethers across the state, she is a very, very popular speaker. And she is polished, uh, as you saw. And I thought Carla Sands got in a few uh, jabs as well. But without question, I think the, the two that are really squaring off would be Mehmet Oz and Dave McCormick. We will see. Uh, what happens? They're kind of in a statistical dead heat. It's going to be interesting to see. We, I haven't seen any polling really, Andy, since the Trump endorsement. If that's boosted Mehmet Oz, as you've been reporting, we've all been reporting, that was kind of a head scratcher to a lot of conservatives. We'll see what impact that has. Bottom line is, we are careening toward the May 17th primary. It's going to be interesting to see what happens in this, this game of bumper cars that is the Republican U.S. Senate primary. Okay, one quick question. How big of a deal, I mean, did anybody, do you think, uh, capture those so many uh, undecided voters tonight? Did, they, did anyone sway them to their side, whoever it might be? Yeah, I, I don't know. All I'm saying is for most people, you know, Mehmet Oz, who was a TV doctor, and everybody kind of has a feel for him. He's very polished. Dave McCormick, you've been seeing those two guys on your ads, the positive ads they've had. He was also very polished. I think one of the more surprising people for most viewers who haven't been exposed to Kathy Barnett would be Kathy Barnett. She is, again, a television commentator. She's polished and knows how to make her points. So if that's the flavor you like, she gave you something, uh, I think, uh, uh, to, to, to latch on to. Okay, one quick question, very quick. Uh, Barnett and Sands went at it uh, several times. What should, what were you, did you expect that to happen? Well, I didn't really expect that to happen, although we did practice, I have to tell you, we did practice with some stand-ins, and, and they were given instructions to make sure you were uh, uh, going back and forth. We were not surprised that Barnett did that. If you uh, go back to the uh, forum that was in Erie, our sister station, WJET, there was a forum about a month ago. Uh, not everybody was there, uh, but Barnett repeatedly was interrupting uh, Mehmet Oz during that forum and frustrated him, in fact. So we were expecting a little sniping from Barnett. We expected it to be more directed uh, over to her right, not so much her going to her left. But, of course, Carla Sands took a few shots at her saying, 
you've run an election, you lost by 20 points, and that caused Barnett to say, well, does that mean you're saying that the election was on the up and up? So it was, it was an interesting exchange that the two women on the stage uh, went after each other. Well, Dan, we're going to have to wrap up time. We never have enough time, do we? Uh, Dan Owens at HTM in Harrisburg, <laughs> thank you so much, and we'll talk to hey, you Hey, before, before you wrap me, Andy, before, can you, before you wrap me, can I just tell, I, I'm a huge fan of you. You do terrific work, and I appreciate it. Well, thank you very much, Dan, and likewise to you as well. Thank you, sir. <laughs> and we'll be right back with more from our panelists coming up talking about tonight's big debate. On WBRE 28. Northeast PA. It's home. We know how to work. How to play. And the right way to eat. We're resilient. We step up and bounce back. United. It takes people who work hard to get the job done. Nobody covers Northeast Pennsylvania like Eyewitness News. Together with you. Nick is an excellent cook, like amazing. He's cooked meals for me, he's cooked meals for my family. His chicken cacciatore is outstanding and the grilled vegetables, guy knows what he's doing in the kitchen. It's great to have a coworker who I get along with and gets along with my family. Sometimes we hang out at his house and he's very patient with my girls. I admire how calm Nick can be at times. It makes the job a lot easier because he's focused and he's present and it makes those tense situations that much easier. When news breaks, you want to be the first to know. We are always at the ready to keep you informed and bring you all angles of the story. We're committed to verifying everything through authorities and eyewitness accounts, so you can count on us to get the story straight. Eyewitness News, together with you. They've served our country, and now we want to honor them. I'm Nick Toma. Join me while I profile veteran stories across America and right here in northeastern Pennsylvania. Watch Veterans Voices, Fridays at 7 on Eyewitness News on WYOU 22. Count on the Eyewitness News I team to fight for you. The only local news team dedicated to exposing the truth, bringing you more investigations and more answers. Have a news tip? Give us a call. We get results. With more than 40 years' experience, count on lead I-Team investigative reporter Andy Mahalshik. Only on Eyewitness News on WBRE and WYOU. Have a news tip? Call 570-706-7428 or visit PA Homepage watching a special edition of This Week in Pennsylvania, Debate Night. Welcome back. I'm Andy Mahalshi coming to you live from the WBRE and the YU studios in downtown Wilkes-Barre. Our next topic, we are focusing on what Biden policy would you reverse? Here's what the candidates had to say tonight. Well, for those who are uh, 90, uh, those Americans who are 90 percent below uh, the, the top 10 percent of Americans versus the bottom 90 percent of Americans, they have been suffering through wage stagnation. For the from Susquehanna County to Washington County, from Erie to Delaware County, we can't find employees. Worker, employee, employers cannot find employees. When people are not working, nothing works. It's the out of control spending. I'll stop it the day I arrive in Washington because we're going to bring more America first senators than just myself. And the first thing we need to do is unlock our energy sector. That was a terrible decision. That's driving the price of fuel. That's driving inflation. The second thing we need to do is put pro-growth economic policies in place that ultimately grow our, our economy and deregulate. And the third thing we need to do is cut back dramatically on this spending. The only thing Joe Biden is building back better is the Republican Party. Well, they all did seem to agree on that point. Their questions are very parallel, uh, attacking the current administration. Dr. Sosa, what do you think? Well, and you're right. They did. They were all kind of parallel in their answers. Uh, most of what they were talking about were in the f first few days of the Biden administration, be it the pipelines, be it energy, be it uh, the spending, et cetera. Um, again, I think they, they need, and, and Again, this is what they. This is what a candidate has to do. They've got to sell themselves. But I think they need to to have focused on what they themselves, along with the Senate, could do to stop things, and they didn't do that. Okay, Rick Morelli. You know, there, there were times in this debate I thought some candidates just gave some vague answers. Uh, I think. Um, Bartos at this time gave a vague answer. I like Sand's answer in the sense that she specifically was on point with mm -hmm. the overspending. I thought that was answering the question. Um, 
I, I think McCormick did a good job in highlighting three different areas. But again, I mean, they're all on the same page. They're going to attack the Democrats at this point in time. Um, but again, I think what's going to differentiate these candidates is when, when someone's going to ask you a question, who's going to answer a direct question and, and give you something specific versus just some vagueness or, or, or attacking. So again, I, I thought there was just lack of substance with a lot of the answers when it came to that question there. And a big discussion tonight also about what does America first mean? Did Donald Trump make America great again? Let's hear what they had to say. President Trump won Pennsylvania in 2016 because for the first time in generations, millions of our fellow Pennsylvanians felt listened to. So everyone here on this debate stage is talking about being America first. They're all saying it. I actually did it. I'm the only person in this race that was appointed by President Trump to be his ambassador to Denmark, Greenland, and the Faroe Islands. What President Trump did is he put his finger on the fact that there were many millions of Americans and many millions of Pennsylvanians that were left behind and that the policies and the leadership didn't take care of them. One word, respect. What President Trump did was respect people who had been othered, forgotten, canceled. MAGA means freedom, and if you are a conservative Republican, you know that. Yes, President Trump coined the word MAGA, but the word itself, make America great again, belongs to the people. Okay, a lot of discussion over MAGA. Let's go with Rick Morelli first. And you, again, Rick Morelli has worked very close with GOP, the inner, the inner workings of it across Pennsylvania. What do you think? Well, again, with that question there, I thought Barnett specifically was going against Trump the way I, I read it. You know, she was like, this wasn't Donald Trump's thing. This is really the, the people first. And I get what she was doing there. Um, but it was just interesting, the fact that she was kind of going against Trump. Um, Oz, who, again, mentioned Trump many times uh, on the show of his endorsement and was really trying to take advantage of that, uh, went back to Trump and said, this is all about respect, respect for the people, um, which was going back to what, what's, more imp what's most important to the people here and, and um, making America first and coming back and, and focusing on the issues around America rather than overseas and things of that nature. Okay, Dr. Sosa. You know what I would say? Uh, I think they missed a point on MAGA. It, it, it really is a Trump issue. But I think what the candidates really needed to do in this case was to start spelling out one after another. Here is the agenda that we plan to try to work on that we as Republicans in the Senate are going to try to do. And, and it, you saw bits and pieces, but you never heard a concrete uh, uh, agenda. And no. I think you know, some of the other leadership in both houses have been talking about that. I didn't surprise many people this whole discussion was taking place. It almost seemed like everyone knew what MAGA meant. Right. Yeah. But I learned some things tonight based on the responses. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, I mean, again, it, it was interesting the fact that they hit on it. It would never be a question I thought someone would ask in, in this debate, but it really goes back to the home. It really ties back into the conservative party, which is what they're trying to establish for themselves, as well as differentiate for others. Okay, we have to break. We never have enough time. Thanks, Rick. When we come back, some final words about tonight's big debate in Harrisburg. Thirty breaking news from overnight and the best place to start your day. Eyewitness News on WBRE 28. The PA homepage app is brand new and better than ever. Find stories faster with improved navigation and save to read later. Plus, the news alerts you count on. The PA homepage app, available in the App Store or use the QR code on screen to download today. When news breaks, you want to be the first to know. We are always at the ready to keep you informed and bring you all angles of the story. He says this impacts the entire borough. They made your water break on Main Street. We're committed to verifying everything through authorities and eyewitness accounts, so you can count on us to get the story straight. A couple lives here, one of them lucky to get out alive. Fast and accurate. The news team that's leading the way in northeastern Pennsylvania. Eyewitness News, together with you. Get eyewitness news wherever you go when you download the PA homepage app. Grab it from the App Store, Google Play, or scan the QR code on your screen to get access to breaking news across the region. And now staying up to date and organized is easier than ever with our new save feature. Just tap the bookmark icon on any story or video and it'll be stashed away in your saved section for later. Download the PA homepage app today.
answers to your health questions are on pahomepage.com. Find local professionals in medicine, dentistry, and more, all in one convenient place. Visit your wellness network only on pahomepage.com. Looking for someone to get the job done? Go to PA Pros on pahomepage.com. Find local professionals covering a wide range of skills who can assist you in your daily watching a special edition of This Week in Pennsylvania, Debate Night. And good evening, I'm Andy Mahalchik. Welcome back to a big show tonight about the debate. Final thoughts from a panelist. Uh, your thoughts and who do you think won, Rick? Well, I'll start with this. I think Barnett um, came short because she was a little bit too aggressive, talked over people, and I don't think she won any points on that. I think Oz came ahead. I, he was clearly attacked. He showed me that he was the front runner. He was on point and he was very composed. And so I, I think that um, he didn't lose anything and I think that he's going to come out of this along with Trump's support in the back being the first uh, the head runner here. Okay, Dr. Sosar. I think Oz and McCormick both did very well. Uh, I don't know that they got challenged as strongly as I had expected the others to do that. I would encourage, however, you all heard things that you liked and or didn't like tonight. Please look at the websites of all of your candidates, Democrat or Republican. That'll make a difference too, and it'll help educate you on what you want. Okay, thank you to our panelists, Dr. David Sosar, political scientist from Northeastern Pennsylvania, and Rick Morelli, a long time uh, connected to the GOP and held elected office. And thank you for your insight to uh, the you, debate Andy. tonight. Rick thank and you. Dr. David Sosar, thank you. And don't forget to join us Wednesday night. We'll have a gubernatorial debate here on WBRE TV. For now, I'm Andy Mahalshik. We'll see you right back here on Monday night. Have a great, have a great night. I want to do a special edition coming up in a few minutes.